Hello and welcome to another update video about NetGas. NetGas has followed through to the downside. That was the idea in our previous video that we should see further downside in actually both scenarios, white and yellow. But now we've arrived at a point where we could see a bounce from this region. And I want to talk about why and what the relevant support levels are. Quick explanation, again, or summary of my two scenarios I'm tracking here. They both go in the same direction, really. Um, I have the white count and the yellow one. They are very, very similar. It's just that one of them is already one step ahead. I think at the moment it is likely that we get one more low at least. So that means one more low below the February low, below the $1.52 level. And that would be either, well, one more low or two more lows. Let's talk about the structure. So first of all, looking at the bigger picture, a larger degree fourth wave topped here in November last year. From that fourth wave top, we've seen a wave one to the downside, a wave two rally, yeah? And we are now likely still in the third wave to the downside, possibly ta possible target range here between $1.45 and $1.29. That's a target range that we defined in previous videos. In addition to that, we have the descending trend line of the trend channel also in this region around $1.30. So that is when wave three then is complete. We'd like to see a fourth wave bounce and a fifth wave still to the downside. So this is the preferred scenario i mean to be honest the difference is very very small because in the other scenario um or let me explain then in, in this scenario we get one more low then a fourth wave and a fifth wave so in the yellow count basically we are already in this fourth wave and the larger degree third wave already bottomed here in february and we are in the larger abc structure as indicated in yellow a b c and this B wave could find support in the current region. And that's why the current area is so relevant. So I think in the last um, updates, it was quite clear. Um, we could see a three wave move up. Yeah, at least no confirmation that something more bullish is unfolding. For that, we would have expected five waves, but we saw three into the resistance area and then a rejection from resistance. That's precisely what we wanted to see in the white count, but also in the yellow one, after the completion of a three wave move, this could be the A wave, now a B wave pullback, and then a C wave rally from here. Why from here? Few points. First of all, we can add a trend line here. Price is just trying to break it, but I would not call that really a sustained break. So there's still a chance to recover, but yeah, depending on how I draw it, we might call it a break. Um, it's just that sometimes trend lines are a bit subjective, yeah? But yeah, it's possibly broken. Also, we're now in a Fibonacci support zone because if this is, and that's even more important, if this is a B wave pullback, then the standard support zone is between $1.75 and $1.61. And the $1.69 level is a very relevant one um, in the box, yeah? So that's the 61.8 retracement level. We've just arrived there. So from this region, we could be looking for a bounce, um, at least watching for a bounce. And the break below $1.61, which is a break below support then, would rather confirm my preferred scenario, which is the white count. To be honest, I'm fairly neutral, but I prefer white a little bit more. That means one more low in wave three, then a larger wave four bounce, then a wave five to the downside. And basically this means here at either $1.69 or $1.61, we'd like to see a bounce. Um, NatGas often retraces to the 78.6 retracement level. So I would not rule out that we get a move down to around about $1.61 and then a bounce from there in yellow wave C. And yeah, if we break through $1.61, then there's some uh, structural support here at $1.58. That's the white B wave low, and then the third wave low, circle three, at around about $1.52. And then, yeah, from there in, into this target area for circle five of the larger degree, third wave. 
So that means in summary, we still have no confirmation that an overall long-term low has been struck. I think we should still see a little bit more downside. If I see a relevant long trade setup, I will let you know. That would require a first five wave move up, ideally coupled with a break above the upper boundary line of the trend channel, followed by a three wave pullback that would give us a so-called one two setup, which could be one of the best setups in Elite Wave. But yeah, we need five waves up for that. At the moment, we only have three. So I keep you updated. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you're interested in daily updates about the S&P 500, as well as regular updates about stocks, then feel free to check out the stocks and S&P 500 service. You'll find the link in the description. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.